So it's a plus. It, it will help us have a more educated yes. workforce in Georgia um, and also encourage um, those uh, folks that go through the program. They'll be working um, for the department or in the CPS. Um, the next area is supervisor mentor program. And one of the things that um, you know, I think any company experiences is the number one reason somebody stays with or leaves a job is their manager. So in this case, it's their supervisor, because those are the people you're working with every day. So this is really about enhancing the skill set of the supervisors. And the recommendation is to add 10 people throughout the state that would be mentors. These would be really experienced supervisors that would be able to mentor our other supervisors in the system and really be there for them to be a coach, to teach them best practices. And so it's really the, a, a major training program to continually enhance the skills of our supervisors. Um, and um, this is something that we heard from the supervisors that because, and I think Bobby showed us in one of the meetings, what's happened with our supervisors, so many of them are carrying very heavy caseloads so that they've moved into caseload management and they are going to need some years of really enhancement of their skill sets. And so this would be a, we think, a, a very reasonable and effective way to, um, to help bolster those skills of the supervisors. And the last item ties into our how do we move the compensation more to market. And this is really establishing a career path. One of the things we heard from social workers is the only way they can really get any increases um, is they have to move from a caseworker to a supervisor or a manager. So there's, there's you know, it's, it's moving into the management ranks, but we have a lot of great caseworkers that we really want to stay on the front line. Um, and because not, it, not everybody's suited to be a supervisor or a district director. I mean, we, we definitely need great leadership, but we, um, we want to have avenues for people to feel like they can, they can move up in their career without necessarily having to move into management. So the recommendation here would be that uh, this would be a way that if you, and we would need to develop this, obviously Bobby and the team would need to develop this, but for instance, if you get particular certifications, um, you know, we talk about dealing with, um, dealing with uh, you know, sexual abuse. That could be, that would be one thing. Dealing with families with, um, there, there are just some competencies that are some highly specialized competencies that would be helpful to have. And so the thought here is that you would, you would set up criteria and that increases would be available based on meeting performance criteria and meeting certifications and that instead of just everybody gets in across the board, you would really have, it would be uh, based on your, your own desires and, de and career development um, and developing that career path. And then our last area um, that Meredith worked on is um, safety and relationships with law enforcement. And there were really two big things that we identified there. The first one was training and working uh, again to train our caseworkers and our supervisors on ways to um, de-escalate situations with a lot of verbal skills um, and, and really having, having much more training. We, you know, we've heard some stories about, I mean, these are very challenging, uh, mostly young women going into situations, very challenging situ uh, family situations, dynamics, and um, making sure that we have training on safety, on mechanisms that can really help them um, from a safety standpoint. Um, we talked about things like meet and greets with local law enforcement. We heard stories about there are some districts that have fantastic relationships between the DFOX workers and the law enforcement. So we want to encourage that in every uh, region and in every geography and ways to even do some joint training. Um, you know, with Meredith's background, she was a, you know, it's a perfect person to give us the advice on that so that we could do some joint training sessions between law enforcement and our DFOX workers. Um, on certain programs. The other um, thing that we learned is the need for technology and there was actually um, there's a technology that we don't have the cost on it yet but it's basically like a panic button that you would put on your name tag and it would be something that um, you could you know if you get into a, a situation it would automatically alert there's you know there were there were different ways you could do it you could automatically alert local law enforcement like come please fast um, or that you could say, you know, kind of an alert 
that, um, that could go out, and it would also be something that it would be a way for the, the caseworkers to continually be checking in so that you knew where they were, you knew where they were going to. It's almost like a GPS kind of thing, but it, was, it would be on a badge, and according to Meredith, you know, this is something that you can do in a very discreet way as opposed to, so that you're, again, you're not escalating a situation. You can, you can do that in a very discreet way. Um, and Georgia Tech is doing some work to help identify what these various options are and what the cost of a system like this might be. But it was perceived and, and assessed to be something that could really be helpful um, in ensuring the safety of our caseworkers. So um, overall, those were our sets of recommendations. Um, we looked at cost benefit. The supervisor mentor program, um, the estimates would be $1.1 million annually, and that would be hiring those, um, those 10 people. The career path, depending on how we, um, we put it together, is between $1 and $5 million annually. And that's really it, the reason we say annually is because once you put it in place, it's going to get built into you know, the, the base um, compensation, but it would really depend upon the level. And that would by the way, that would bring us up to market rates, so um, that would also help quite a bit with the compensation. We don't have the cost on the technology. We tried to quantify what it would do in terms of reduced cost of turnover, because turnover is costly, and there are estimates. We don't have a specific, scientifically proven, but you can you know, typically look at every time you turn over a caseworker, you know, it's going to cost you some portion of somebody's salary to get another person in, get them retrained. Um, and the more specialized they are, the higher that cost goes. So we came up with an estimate based on where our turnover rates are today. If we could decrease those between 2 and 5 percent, the estimate was that would reduce the cost of turnover. Um, and we think this is pretty conservative, between 700 and $1.7 million annually. So we were trying to look at if you put these things in place, you would be able to reduce, directly reduce costs related to turnover. Um, and tried to quantify that. Certainly there are um, qualitative improvements with improvement in morale. We think we could definitely help with improvement in the productivity of the caseworkers. Um, we will have a more highly skilled workforce as a result of these recommendations and stability in the workforce, which we know can certainly help with performance. And then the real, the real big benefit is improved outcomes for Georgia's children with, with having that stability in the workforce. There were a couple of other things that came up we just wanted to mention as we were doing our work. Um, technology was a big issue, big theme that we heard about. Um, public relations, this issue that the, the external press is always negative about um, the work that's done and so needing to have some type of public relations help there. Making sure that we have a scorecard for key stakeholders and the need to be transparent about that scorecard so that we could keep people informed of how well we're doing and setting targets and, and working towards those targets. We thought that could be a great help with communication. And then another opportunity is making sure that we're really uh, continually looking for pursuing grants, both federally, like the, the 4E program that came out, but there are other grant opportunities perhaps, and then pursuing private funding. We have talked to some donors during this process who care a lot about kids in this state and we think there may be some opportunities um, for some of these programs to be able to ask for some private uh, foundation support um, to help us transform our, uh, our child welfare system. So that would be the recommendation from the recommendations from the personnel subcommittee. I know that that one's being addressed by the governor already. The target date, I believe, Bobby, is 2017, which there's the possibility it may be earlier, correct? Yes. Um, and so that was, is one that's already in play and probably doesn't need, I mean, we can put that in our recommendation should we agree with the governor, but it looks like that's going to happen with, with, you know, without us doing anything. Is that correct? Or does that need legislative support in order to ensure? With, with that being a budget item, that absolutely requires legislative support. Okay, so it's not something that's already been approved and will be implemented. So we put money, um, we 
he is raising money when it speaks to this. Um, the governor has already put money in the budget, but it has to be approved by the legislature when they come in. That is a And Stephanie, that's why we wanted to endorse it because it was such an it was it, it is being worked on, but it was such a uh, significant issue for the caseworkers and the supervisors. We wanted to make sure that we supported that recommendation and that 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 was recorded from the, so the commission. So the initial investment has been made. But what do we require for fifteen and sixteen in order to bring those levels where they need to be? It's, it's, it's initially we added one hundred and seventy-five caseworkers. 15 budget, uh, the 15 amended budget will be additional 103, uh, and there'll be a considerable investment required in 16 and 17 as well. Those final numbers have not been decided on, but it will be a considerable investment, much like the first year investment, uh, 175 each year. So the only thing that's been approved is the initial 175. And what's the cost of that? Dollar. Uh, 175 round out, nine million dollars. Yeah, total funds. About and the 103 uh, round about four and a half. So it's about 13. And it's not, I mean, it's not easy to pinpoint the exact number because for one thing, as Bobby said in previous meetings, um, our intake, you know, our numbers are really tough on the record of kids we have in the overall system. So just thinking about ratios, you know, that number for us, um, in order to get a sufficient the number of the numerator the moving is constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing for everybody you know, to understand as, as we have more kids coming into the system